resuming debate, I recognize the Honourable Member for Don Valley West for his right of reply. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I also want to thank my colleagues who uh, support, uh, supported the bill and also the member for uh, Rosemont and from uh, Trinity Spadina in Toronto for their support. Of course, it's quite appropriate that the last speaker from Mississauga, being an accountant, should be so supportive of something which demands greater accountability. I want to thank everybody for participating in the debate and look forward to meeting people in committee as we get into the fine detail. I want to begin with the remarks made by the speaker uh, on the question of royal recommendation. As I indicated uh, in a reply to him previously, we recognize the difficulty of the royal recommendation in establishing an independent commissioner right now. We support the principle of doing that, but we think this is mostly about a National Sustainable Development Act. Therefore, we will use the existing Office of the Commissioner of the Environment and the existing mandate. Um, we will also no longer require the Commissioner to evaluate in advance the likelihood of success. We think that there's a fair criticism there and that we'd be, we would be better off having the Commissioner monitor and then audit the success of a plan developed by the government as envisaged under the bill. And also, I want to make the point about the Advisory uh, Committee on Sustainable Development. We will make it clear that these positions are non-remunerative, and hence, uh, we will avoid the necessity for a royal recommendation. In response to criticism made by the Parliamentary Secretary and Minister of Transport, uh, he says that, really, all the problems can be solved by the existing situation, but the previous Minister of the Environment and the current uh, parliamentary secretary to the Minister of the Environment, both have been vehement in their criticism of the current arrangement, calling for change, and that's what this bill does. The, uh, uh, we have uh, also recognized that there may be some difficulties, surtout pour le député de Rosemont. Especially for the member for Rosemont, around the issue of provincial jurisdiction. We will eliminate references to the provinces in the legislation to make it clear that this is going to be about federal departments and about a national plan. The cabinet committee, which was referred to by the parliamentary secretary of the Ministry of Transport, does not require a royal recommendation. It was never suggested so by the, by the speaker and his officials. It is a machinery of government issue where there are existing resources. The question about the petitions process. We agree that actually we don't need this section on the petitions process because the existing petitions process will work. So that problem we recognize and will re remediate through amendments at the committee stage. And finally, in terms of the, the, the suggestion that everything is just fine and that a review by the Environment Department will solve the problem, here's what the Green Ribbon Panel Review Committee said about the very problem we're addressing here in the, in the report that was just released uh, within the last month. This decentralized department-by-department department approach to sustainable development strategies is unique internationally. Many countries have developed national sustainable development strategies and then assigned responsibility to departments for implementing the components. Over the years, the Government of Canada has made a number of commitments to develop an overall sustainable, sustainable development strategy, but has not done so. Many of the people we talked with, inside and outside government, view the absence of an overall strategy as a key gap in Canada's efforts to move along a sustainable development path. And the absence of concrete objectives and milestones makes the assessment of progress a key part of the Commissioner's mandate more difficult. Mr. Speaker, what we're doing in this legislation is simply responding to the criticism of the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for the Environment, responding to the criticism of the previous Minister of the Environment, responding to the criticism of the Commissioner himself, and responding to the criticism of the Green Ribbon Panel. And what we will be doing is, uh, within the, the, the appropriate scope of a private member's bill, addressing all of these issues. We will eliminate some of the problems, thanking very much both the, the, the government for its suggestions and the speaker, but we will accelerate the process of coming to grips with a real problem, which is there is not a framework, a legislative framework, which allows the commissioner to do the job and the government of Canada here. truly to pursue a national sustainable development strategy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Here, here. Is the House ready for the question? The question is the following. 
Seconded by Mr. Bagnell. Moved that Bill C-474 an act to require the development and implementation of a national sustainable development strategy, the reporting of progress against standards set of the environmental indi indicators, and the appointment of an independent commissioner of the environment and sustainable development accountable to parliament, adopting des, des objectifs précis. Adopting specific goals with respect to sustainable development in Canada and making consequential amendments to another act be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Environment and Sustainable Development. Pleasure of the House to adopt the motion. All those in favor of the motion will please say yay. All those opposed will please say nay. nay. In my opinion, in my opinion, the yeas have it.